Today, it's Edwin's Monday Evening Property Rant. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Of course, it's Monday, and of course, it's Edwin back on for another round. Hi, Edwin, how are you doing? Blessed are the property owners, Martin. They shall inherit their hedonic. <laughs> Blessed are they that have doubled their money every seven to ten years, for they shall see the domain. <laughs> 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 this is this is divine intervention, Martin. Uh, the the uh, powers to be, the the the, the Almighty, what, yeah, whoever you want it, whatever, whatever, whomever, it's um, is out there is looking out for the uh, for 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 the proper artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got another analogy for you, Edwin. You know, at the moment there is um, a, a NASA expedition to a, a meteor, right? And they're actually going to fly a satellite onto a little meteor to try and sort of move it off course slightly on the principle that if they give it a nudge, then it will change trajectory. And of course, you know, that's the analogy that I'm thinking about the property market. What's the little nudge that's going to actually change the trajectory of the whole property market given a little bit of time? You know, is it interest rates? Is it uh, more first time buyers? Is it, you know, more bribes? I don't know. Well, look, we just got to keep, uh, keep an eye on the numbers as I keep on saying. It's those numbers that are sending everybody, uh, uh, you know, in a, uh, in a spin, a bit of a uh, panic spin. Look, that, 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 yeah, that sounds to me like a like a like a, like a movie. I'm, I've seen that movie, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what happened to the movie? They sort of nudged it in the wrong direction, and it came head in for us. They keep saying we're not going to do that. Honest, we're not going to do that. But you know, <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, we'll see. Shall we? It's a long way away, and um, they claim it's not going to have any significant um, um, impact uh, on us. Impact on the on the on the meter, I suppose. But it's interesting. It's called uh, Project Dart. <laughs> Project Dart. Well, yeah. You know, look, uh, I, I guess you could say we we should be counting all our eggs <laughs> before the or all our chickens before the um, before they hatch or something like that. All I, all I know, Martin, is that I'm getting three eggs a day now. So that's what I can count on. Can count on those eggs. Uh, everything else is just all over the shop. It, yeah, it's it, really. It, it's really. Uh, it, it's it, it, every which way you turn, it, th things just change. But look, it's it, it was just fitting to see that uh, yeah, the gods are, are, are gods. The gods are there. They're, they're trying to also uh, you know, uh, influence the property uh, market. In the it, one would think it it would be in the right direction. Uh, yeah, poor sale listing numbers are sort of uh, coming down, are, are coming off the uh, off the boil, and 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 that seems to be putting uh, people in a bit of a spin. Uh, you know, China is a war. Or is it peace? Uh, is uh, in other words, are they getting ready to walk into Taiwan, or uh, or, or have they really uh, done away with Xi, and 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 there's going to be a you know a, a change of government, or is if they have done away with Xi, who's the next one? But because of what I'm told, uh, the the next one in line could be even uh, more um, uh, more hardcore than uh, Xi himself. So uh, but, yeah, there's all sorts of things that are going around. We don't know what's uh, What's fiction and what's true? Uh, the WeChat chatter is uh, one thing for sure is that they're celebrating and uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're counting their chickens for sure, yeah, uh, uh, because the, um, the 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 pound is going south and the um, they that they because the Hong Kong dollar is pegged on the uh, American currency, uh, they uh, they seem to be you know, uh, boasting and, and uh, making a lot of noise. Uh, we get, we're going to talk about what they're, what they're saying, what they're talking about with regards to our market. So, yeah, there's a lot of things happening. There's a few things that we said last week that were going to uh, uh, happen this week. And sure enough, uh, lo and behold, the, uh, you know, the panic buttons have fired and uh, you know, all cylinders have cranked up and uh, people getting a bit emotional, a bit of emotion and so forth. Uh, so, uh, you yeah, know, is it a dead cat bounce, Martin, or, or should I say how high can the cat bounce? <laughs> yeah, I always feel a bit sorry for a dead cat, you know, when it bounces. It doesn't bounce very high, does it? But no, I mean, you, we did say last week that uh, if people start taking the properties off, um, you know, that's going to change the dynamics. And we're certainly seeing some people pulling those properties off. But there are still some who are needing to sell. And uh, in my recent anti spruik videos, I've continued to show that uh, asking prices on the portals are being dropped quite significantly now. 
and it's quite widely spread. So, you know, we are in the middle of a quite um, a chaotic situation, I think. Look, it is, and this is what a lot of people have to understand, and that is we, we said for a, we've been saying for a very long time there's going to be a lot of out of line sales, uh, ones with you know, high high returns, others with uh, with, with with low. Uh, you know, low um, for, you know, sale figures, uh, and you, but you've got to keep, keep abreast of everything else that's happening in the area, particularly in the area that people are looking for. So one property doesn't make the market, nor does one auction uh, make the market or, or kill the market. It's, it's, it's a combination of, or amalgamation of, of, of everything. Uh, all the data points that you can gather, or as many data points as you can gather in order to determine what you're, uh, what you're going to you know, how you're going to approach if you have to buy or if you have to sell. But look, one of the things that have, that, that really have stood out over the weekend for me and, and for our clients is the fact that properties that, uh, there are properties that are still in high demand and those, are, those properties are the ones that have been um, fully renovated, they've been well renovated, well maintained, and, and the new properties in, in you know, sought after areas. So one of which is, uh, you know, where Para, Para uh, uh, tweeted out uh, one in, uh, one and he yeah, tagged me on it, asked me if it was, uh, you know, if I thought it was underquoted. Uh, you know, I, I replied with, uh, you know, is it a is it dead cat bounce or is it underquoting? Is it a bit of a bit of both? One one thing for sure, the one in uh, the one that I rep- replied with in Eastwood, you know, that was uh, definitely uh, what I would consider um, foul play by the agent. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm alleging underquoting to an extreme, where you're quoting two point. 2.75 as a guide and he tells for 3.5 and the thing is martin that dusty knows the owner uh, uh dusty knows the owner's mum and, and we knew from the start from the onset that um uh, that property was uh the owner w- wasn't expecting anything less than 3.3 and that was from uh, the own the owner's mum mums don't lie yeah real estate agents do but mums don't lie <laughs> absolutely yeah well it's uh i think um you know it's it's a bit all over the place uh and as you say, not, you know, properties that are well presented, well maintained, well renovated, there's still some demand for those. The uh, lesser properties, definitely less so. And units are still, I think, um, looking pretty, pretty flaky. Talking of looking pretty flaky, what about the WeChat, chat, chat, chat? There's some really weird stuff going on there. <laughs> Look, there is. Like we said, uh, last week Z was out and about, uh, you know, uh, rubbing shoulders with... Uh, you know, with high-profile individuals around the world, and um, and now he's uh, he's disappeared. Uh, look, outside of that, because we don't know what's going on, uh, what, what's really happening, uh, we won't know for a little bit. Uh, you know, sooner we'll know the whole world will know sooner than later. Um, but uh, there's a lot, obviously, going on there uh, from from uh, economic point of view, from property point of view, from uh, military military point of view. The desire to walk into. Uh, in a Taiwan, is it now? Is it later? Is it uh, you know in in three months' time, six months' time, whatever? Yeah, you know, there's all these things that are that that will, will, regardless of what happens, it will influence our market, um, nonetheless our property market. Uh, uh, and before that, we spoke about we told our viewers that the Australian government was advertising uh, hammer and tong in uh, in Chinese cities, uh, promoting uh, uh, yeah having major ad campaigns. And, and promoting for students to come over uh, to uh, to get the uh, uh, the, you know, the the master's degrees uh, and, and the like, and and I have um, I have one one of the WeChat chatterers from uh, from China send us uh, send us this. Uh, this is one of the ads, Martin. Uh, as you know, we told our viewers that we were going to have something. It took a, it's taking a little bit longer to get. I'm expecting a few more more ads that have popped up in other cities uh, to be sent. But uh, people got to understand people there in in various parts. Our our uh, chatter is there. Some are in uh, lockdown. Some are uh, you know, don't want to go too far. They don't want to venture out too, too because of the turmoil that's that, that's happening there in mainland China. But whatever, one thing for sure is that our government do want these students back uh, into the tertiary education uh, institutions here. They're obviously suffering. That's going to put uh, a, a huge, uh, more pressure um, and, and a, huge, a, a bigger burden uh, on the rental. Uh, on the rental market uh, for for the locals, uh, because the the state, federal, and the local governments are certainly not addressing that issue, which we're going to talk about later on as well. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. And um, you know, high net worth, come to Australia. You know, the, the doors are open. 
<laughs> that, that, yeah, the doors are open. But look on that, having said that, we know that there's, it's hard to get money out of China at the moment. Uh, it's hard to even get a passport. So it's really, they're really targeting a specific, uh, a specific group with, with the ad campaigns, right? Uh, but outside of that, you've got the, um, you, you've got, uh, you know, the situation with the, with, with, with the, um, yeah, you know, with Hong Kong, the Hong Kongese and the the expats that are there in Hong Kong, and and also the you know uh, Hong Kongese that have got PR permanent residency to to come into Australia, and and yeah, you know, they're they're cheering for joy because uh, whilst the pound uh, is um, is going backwards, as uh, Tarek uh, points out in one of his tweets, and, and I chased that tweet with um, with, with one what, what one of our WeChat chatterers. Uh, uh, from their uh, send us, and that's uh, the fact that the yeah the, the Hong Kongese as we call them they're uh, they're, they're really eyeing the Canadian uh, property market and the Australian property market because uh, you know our dollar is also dropping, uh, and so is the Canadian. So therefore they they've got more they, they've given more bang for their buck in the exchange rate. So they're um, eyeing out um, the other uh, our markets. Well, maybe not surprising, and uh, I noticed that the pound continues to slide lower ever. Um, and, uh, of course, the Aussie dollar is also down somewhat because of the strong US dollar. But, um, yeah, it does change the uh, perspective when you've got it from the other's point of view. You know, if they're sitting in a currency that's um, stronger, then that gives them um, more leverage, I guess. Interesting times, Edwin, interesting times. Yeah. And what about, what about the local WeChat chats? What are they up to? Well, look, with the news of what's up with the with what the Hong Kongese are saying and WeChat uh, conversations uh, around that and, and what they're looking at, obviously they're um, they're they've been spurred a little bit um, uh, on on a little bit uh, uh, harder to 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 go out and start um, pursuing and start making offers on those properties that we've been talking about that they're being lying out again. The properties that are that, that are uh, investment properties in the main part for them. Um, because and that they can convert into multiple dwellings, into uh, and break those um, those rental ceilings and barriers in in particular suburbs. Uh, so where they can rent out rooms on you know, for on average two fifty to three hundred per week, and they can convert homes, uh, you know, three four bedroom homes into five six bedroom homes by um, by uh, closing off the, the lounge rooms and, and, and extended rooms like such as sunrooms and the like. Also, they're looking for uh, properties that are, as I said, that are predominantly sitting on piers because it's easier to put in plumbing works when you've got uh, piers because uh, if you can accommodate a room with, a, with its own uh, toilet uh, in a kitchenette style, well, then obviously you're going to get more for it. Uh, and, you know, so they look, that's, what they look, that's what they're looking at because they are very, still very reluctant to put their... Um, Put their money back into into the retail sector or the we are restaurants or yeah you know, the hospitality because they just don't see any any benefit in that and um and and it's staying away from the uh, share market as well so they they feel you know, feel very strongly that uh, the, the the property arena is where they need to they need to focus on now which is unfortunate Martin because uh, the the price points that they're walking into or moving into. Is the is that band that you and I've been talking about that the first home buyers uh, are very much uh, you know um, uh, can walk into can move into, but uh, they, they they're being priced out and again it's the it's this uh, the stupidity and the the bad, bad policies of the state and federal governments. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a cracked record. It goes on playing the same way, doesn't it? And I guess another cracked record, uh, Edwin, is um, you know the rental crisis, which um, continues to uh, uh, rave forward, doesn't it? Look, it's shocking. It really, really is shocking. And why is this allowed in in the greatest country in the world, Mark? Um, you know, why is it allowed to to have young families living in in garages? Uh, uh, you know, and I put this tweet out, and I tagged um, Alba, uh, you yeah, know, because he, you know, he, he talked uh, often, uh, yeah, talks about his background and you know having a single mother and so forth, and being you know, from coming from a single parent uh, 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 background and so forth, and, and living in the housing commission and the like. Yeah, I, I've been there as well. Yeah, we've been there uh, with uh, sharing a two-bedroom apartment with uh, yeah with five girls at the time, and and, and mum to look after us. Uh, so it, there are those searches, but but that was back in the you know in the late seventies, 
late seventies and very early eighties. Uh, we're in, uh, you know, uh, we're, you know, we're in 2022 for crying out loud. And why is this allowed to happen now? When also you and I have spoken about and being very vocal about the fact that there's over 1.2 million uh, homes vacant uh, across Australia. Yes, Edwin, that's right. Um, and it's interesting because the data that we included on that one, which we'll uh, look at in that more detail now, shows where some of the highest um, hikes in rate, uh, rents are. Uh, and it's interesting how um, WA and Gold Coast and WA Bunbury um, and Mandra's up there in the top um, <laughs> in the top 10, right? One of my favourite postcodes. Yeah. So it does show you um, that this is pretty widespread and these are the biggest hikes in advertised house rent since the pandemic. Um, and it goes back to one of those little questions that we keep asking about what's the difference between the new rents that are being advertised versus the sort of portfolio of rents. And, of course, the CPI and the ABS report the portfolio of rents whereas what we're looking here are the rise in new rents, but they flow through ultimately. So this is another indication as to why we're going to see down the track um, higher inflation for longer, because these these increases are dramatic, you know, 44.3% and 43.1%, you know, 43.1% on the Gold Coast of all places. Um, pretty remarkable. Well, it, it is, and, 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 and the ones and the, the the people that are get disenfranchised, the, the again the, the young families, uh, you know, the, the the young that are trying to just uh, provide for for yeah for, for the the small families, the the startup families, uh, the startup couples, and, and and it's shameful. It really, really, it really irks me to you know, to to think that we're at this uh, at this point at this juncture, and you know, and, and we're, yeah. And we're focusing on uh, on bloody uh, Queensland's going to focus on windmill farms of all of, of all things. I mean, look, it, the politics is just it, I don't know. I, I just uh, I, I try to say as little as I can with regards to politics, other than bagging the uh, all the politicians that have investment properties. Uh, but um, you know, outside of that, it's there's so much they chase that they chase you know so many headlines and, and yet not not dealing with the issues that the uh, uh, that, that the community are facing uh, the real issues. You know, you've got the the, the elderly, you've got the uh, single parents, uh, the 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 ones that are well, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, the, the you know the um, physically impaired or, uh, or or handicapped in one way or another. Uh, you know, they need special accommodation. Uh, th there's just they're just not being looked after. There's just no. It, it appears on face value. That there is just no concern, but then again, you only have to sit, you know, um, take a step back uh, or have a helicopter view, and you sort of realise, hold on a minute, these are uh, th these are r relatively small communities, and in a, in a sense, their vote really doesn't matter. So that do the politicians really don't care, do they? Yeah, it's a tyranny of numbers, isn't it? But uh, you now the ABS, the ABC story, I should say, the ABC story uh, was uh, pretty powerful, and in fact, uh, in the introduction, I thought it was. Uh, Pretty amazing when the uh, article started out by saying this single mother says the worst part isn't being priced out, it isn't the absence of windows, it's not even the 150 plus failed rental applications, it's the gnawing feeling that she's letting down her kids. And that's the point. There are, you know, there are real social uh, consequences beyond the economic ones uh, and no one is taking this seriously, unfortunately, which is a really big deal because, um, you know, it is a large proportion of the population, but as you say, a relatively disenfranchised one. Yeah, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's sad. It's it really sad because it just brings back, uh, yeah, brings back memories of what, uh, yeah, uh, what my mum went through, uh, yeah, through that experience, what we all went through, uh, and, um, and, and yeah, kids... Uh, the, the girls that were the youngest one was at the time was um, you know, she was only she was under two, so it, it, it was um, it, it was hard. It was very very hard, and and, and it certainly impacts impacts their persona uh, and and their psyche for the rest of their for the rest of their lives. And it's you know a lot of them need uh, more more nurturing uh, than than the others, and you know you just sort of have to try to. Stay above it all and, and rise above it. Um, but yeah, look. At the end of the day, one of the one of the things is that, as I said, this is a great nation and we can do better. And, and I, I am hoping that uh, you know Albo and his government uh, 
do start to 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 look at this a lot more consciously and, and start uh, yeah, to be more proactive uh, in this area. I'm certainly going to be pushing out there in in all the platforms that I uh, may have a small voice, maybe a small voice, but I have a voice uh, and, you know, and and push that. I certainly you know, uh, I know that um, our premier t- uh, follows me on Twitter and. And I'll certainly take him on 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 uh, property issues with related to uh, to the rental sector, you know, uh, quite often. So, I, and I know that uh, he also watches our show. Absolutely, yeah, it is um, very very concerning, and as you say, it needs some um, political action as well as other things, doesn't it? And it's interesting, of course, because there's this article here from uh, the AFR, which made the point that residential listings are plunging, particularly in Queensland, and this is all to do with the land tax. Uh, changes which are coming in and it's interesting that uh, the new south wales premier said today that uh, he wasn't going to share any information about um, property investors from new south wales who may also have property in queensland because <laughs> he thinks it's, it's not right um this is a really big stink now um but what it is doing is taking properties off the market and uh, that's reducing again the supply of properties for rent as landlords sell up and it's also putting downward pressure on prices across Queensland, as we're seeing in the latest data. Well, that, that's right. So one in my understanding is that one in five will be selling. Uh, that, that's what the data is showing. Well, that's what the um, you know, uh, people are saying. So one in five. Uh, but I, I recall, ha- you know, having conversations around this that we, you know, uh, earlier this year, we said that the uh, all the people that travelled up there and and went and invested in Queensland that, that were going to come back. It was always going to happen. Yep. This was always going to happen. This this yep. this money grab was always going to happen. Uh, I stopped. I stopped uh, uh, buying and and looking for to to help others buying in Queensland uh, two decades ago because it's the same shit show. Um, it's it's you know it, you know, it history repeats itself. Uh, it, it, you know, it's cyclical. Every ten years it repeats itself. Uh, if it's not the spruikers trying to sell you. Uh, uh, subdivisions in swampland, in reclaimed swampland. Uh, you know, it, it's the, um, the the taxable interest that the uh, that, that the uh, Queensland government uh, you know start eyeing out into in, you know, into proper you know, in people's uh, wanting to to make something better for them uh, for themselves by investing. So yeah, look, it, the 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 thing that's going to the outcome of this is uh, the investors uh, again. They, um, yeah, you know, some of the chat from the WeChat chatters is that uh, they, they've they, they've turned off from Queensland property investing and, and again iron out uh, the the the, uh, the the properties in New South Wales and around the, the Sydney region and and the outskirts and in the areas where once again the first home buyers are going to get priced out. No, it's consistent, consistent, isn't it? Unfortunately, and consistent in a bad way. Um, and, of course, just to add to that, in the um, Sydney Morning Herald, there was this article which talked all about um, NIMBYs making housing unaffordable. Now, of course, the Grattan Institute has for some time said that we should be doing higher densities of development. Um, and they also are big on immigration, which I'm not quite sure that uh, I would support particularly. But it is interesting they're saying that, um, you know, basically we are, are not leveraging what we might be able to leverage and therefore there's a lack of supply and there's a lot of opposition to high density developments nimbys are back in town <laughs> and again uh what have i been saying for how long how many years <laughs> i know that the that, that the red tape that the local governments and the impediments that that you find in the in the local governments look I, i'm not I, i'm not for uh high-rise development uh in a lot of areas uh, I'm, you know, I, I think, you know, but uh, what I am for is is for the the, the the small to medium density developments, your duplexes to your you know, four six villa, uh, you know, townhouse, um, you know, medium sized developments, where you've got in certain LGAs of Sydney, uh, homes sitting on twelve hundred square meters or nine fifty in the North Shore, and they can't be, you can't, they can't be, um, you can't put a duplex, or you can't knock the old uh, fibro down. Uh, and, and put a duplex on there, or you can't even put a, um, you know, uh, you know let, let's say a, a triplex or, or, or a few villas uh, on there because of the because of the regulations again, because of the nimbys, the uh, not in my backyard uh, 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 people. So it, it's and but the yeah, you know, it comes back to bite them in the ass, Mark. 
it really comes back to bite them in the ass and, and, and they get the comeuppance because, you know, as they say, karma is a bitch. Because as these NIMBYs get older, they realize that, hold on a minute, in order for me to downsize, I have to basically have to buy a retirement home or, a, or going to a retirement village 40, 50 kilometers away from where I, where I spent the last 40, 50 years. So, again, you know, people have just got to, uh, you know, this you know, fairness, it, it, it seems to be something that, um, a, a, a word that, that, that's no longer in our vocabulary or, or reasonableness. Uh, seems to have um, evaded a lot of uh, uh, people's uh, logic uh, in, in, in the way that uh, we do things. Because um, it was always logical to, uh, as the populations grew, as, uh, as, the, um, as the, 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 the suburbs, yeah, the suburbs, suburban sprawl went further west, further north, further southwest, uh, you know, that you got, to, you ended up with all the, all the homes, all the fibro homes, uh, in in the inner west, or uh, like you know, in the in in that belt in that region, you know, twenty kilometers from uh, from the city from the CBD, twenty thirty kilometers from the CBD, uh, they were always going to come to an age. You know, the ones that were for the ex servicemen's uh, um, uh, uh, homes that were built up the after the war, and then the housing commissions, they were always going to come to. They always had a use by date, and, and they were sitting on blocks. You know, anywhere between 650 to, to 800. In, in St. Mary's, you see you know, some of these homes on uh, quarter acre blocks where they, there was a time where you could build on, a, on these blocks, you could build medium density and put six townhouses. Six townhouses was a bit too much, uh, you know, uh, force fair. But then they went from that to, to now you can't do you know, bugger all. You, you've, you've got to get special permissions to build a bloody granny flat. Yeah, and it's interesting because the UK last uh, Friday announced a whole bunch of measures to try and actually accelerate growth in around the UK. And one of the things that they've spoken about in the UK is removing some of the restrictions on development and planning because they're arguing somewhat similarly that there's a whole lot of red tape and a whole lot of barriers are in the way. As a result of that, property supply is, um, you know, restricted and there are many areas where they believe that more property should be built so this is not just an australian thing but we do seem to be right in the middle of it don't we insofar that um, the planning regulations and the costs that are imposed on developers all of those things are definitely definitely barriers and also make the point that if you could actually do a little bit more subdivision um, you could get away from the high-rise concentrations we've got and just have a slightly higher density further out which actually is probably a, a net win-win because particularly perhaps people who are moving to later stages of life would quite appreciate a, a low-rise, smaller property with not too much garden around it. So, you know, th th there's a whole bunch. I think we need to be much more creative than we have been and are much more willing to, um, you know, challenge the, um, the status quo and all, all, all of these things. Yeah, look, and unfortunately, uh, one of the things that we won't, we'll, never, we'll never get rid of is, um, is greed. Uh, 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 you know, agreed from uh, from the um, uh, from all government departments, from uh, you know, sectors. Not everybody, but uh, you know, from different departments and different bodies. Because you see, the there's more money for a local for 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 a local government um, government body uh, in 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 development of high rise than there is in a in medium density or you know, development of uh, you know, four or five um, you know like the old, good old uh, three-story walk-ups where you saw uh, apartment blocks of 12 to 17 uh, units uh, across a footprint of, let's say, 2,500 square metres. Um, then you go from that to, to like, Parramatta, uh, you know, closer to the CBD where the changes happened in Parramatta about eight years ago where we went uh, from being able to put um, uh, 12, 15 apartments on a thousand square meters to be able to put a hundred and a uh, hundred and ten apartments on the same uh, block of land, and the council contributions went from uh, you know six eight thousand uh, for uh, for council contributions to uh, forty five thousand plus. Uh, you know, if you wanted to to get a, a, a higher yield, as they say, uh, you, you could lobby the government for it, uh, providing that there was a, uh, a a a profit share of the upside. I mean, this is the insanity that, that 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 goes on with the local LGAs, and is it any wonder why? The, then you get to a point where then nothing gets built in the meantime, uh, apart from you know the those demonstrable sites that people don't really 
want to live in anyway, um, the, those shoe boxes, and and then we, here we are. So in order for something to happen moving forward, uh, yeah, by the time he gets gazetted, by the time he gets uh, acted on, it's going to be three to five years before we get to the end result. If it happened now, if he was agreed on now. Yeah, that's right. And um, the chance of that hat happening is probably, is probably <laughs> pretty low, isn't it, unfortunately? Anyway. Um, let's go and talk about the numbers because you did say that they were down and it's worth showing, I think, this week's numbers. So 18,434 overall listed with just over 8,000 houses and 8,500 apartments. And if we compare that with the previous week when it was 18,552 with... Um, 8,171 houses and 8,506 apartments. So where we can see the movements predominantly is in houses, right? With uh, the, the number of houses on listings going down, apartments are still there. And um, it's an interesting um, you know, change in the weather because we saw listings grow through the winter. Now we're into spring, listings are going down. Yeah, look, they are. And this is what's sending that... Uh, that 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 bit of panic and and, uh, and you get a little bit of momentum in the in in the market in the auction clearance rates. In the previous week, if you recall, Martin, we were closer to eighteen thousand eight hundred uh, for uh, yeah on the market. I can't. I think it was uh, closer to eight and a half thousand uh, homes uh, on market. I mean, this is. But the, you know, uh, again, we there the, the, there are a couple of things also that we. Yeah, we don't have a lot of time to analyze everything. We just try to give our audience an overview. Yep. Yeah, but then you start looking at some of the uh, so, some of the properties that are staying on market. Why are they staying on market, and why are they lagging on? And it's, it, usually they need a lot of work. Uh, that they're not, they don't have the best presentation, and they've got idiots for salespeople that are trying to sell them. Um, so you know, all these fa all, all these things that factor in. Hence the reason why, if it's yeah, the pristine homes in sought after areas with good uh you know uh school catchment um you know uh provisions and uh, you know will sell and they seem to uh, attract uh, a, a lot of money and the people that are that are watching these homes and they've seen that there's only a few of these come up on market and they go very rapidly they're sort of somewhat uh, emotional and they're panicking a little bit and jumping in and let's not forget that these people are people that have that they've that they sold last year uh, they either sold their homes already they, or, or their investment properties or other type of, types of investment. They've just been sitting and waiting. And, you know, in a way, they, they are influenced by the, uh, uh, by the uh, Tom Panos uh, property index. <laughs> and they, Which will come on to shortly, they, right? <laughs> and they feel it's the bottom and they, and they want to jump in. But you and I also talk about the fact that the, the interest rate rises haven't, haven't bitten yet. Uh, yeah, or well, they're just starting, and, and some are starting to to feel. And I get that that side of the equation from the from the conversations that I have with other agents of of, of investors that are already preparing the homes uh, to you know, to 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 take the market because of that those two those two reasons they can't afford to keep them the rents that the, the rents aren't uh, covering the the the, um, the the rate increases, and because of the, the 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 state of the property that the yeah, the state of the property that it's in and it needs a lot of rectification work in order to demand the higher rents as well and i'll, I'll make one other point edwin the, the latest um data from the asx on the yield curve is showing that now the markets are saying that interest rates will be well over four percent through the whole of 2023 and into 2024 so uh, what that means is that the pressure on people because of these higher interest rates is going to be supremely difficult to navigate. And that's going to, I think, put more pressure on more people to say, time to get out. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how, how that plays out. And I'll also make the point, of course, that the auctions, it's interesting looking at the auction stats, that, um, well, you know, the, there's a bit of activity, isn't there, really? Look, there, there is, but not as much as last year. Mm. If you look at the if you look at the uh, yeah you know, the, the the football grand final weekend of last year, which is what we're going into this year, uh, that, that this that, that this coming Saturday, uh, that, there was more last year with a lot less. I think we we just had over five thousand listings on market last uh, last year. Um, the you know our properties for sale, and, and and but yeah, we had more on auction. In other words, the that there was there was a uh, there was still a lot 
a, a lot more confidence in the market. So we are not we're not seeing the the, the confidence. So uh, you know, look again. I just use this. Uh, I just have this, and and I share this on Twitter, and uh, and I share this on on our commentary because so many people make uh, you know, um, you know, make the you know, the, the auction clearance rates the the, the the bees knees of of, uh, of 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 property data and and, and you know how to buy you know, what what determines whether you buy or whether you sell. You know, I I just put it out there. To me, if if you're going to use that. To me, what it shows is is that there is no confidence. Mm. The, the the seller, there's still you know the, the the vendors are still somewhat hesitant, and so are the agents. Because if the agents were so confident that the you know that uh, that there was a great time to buy, that it was the, uh, at the bottom, we would we would see higher numbers. Given the fact that there's more properties for sale uh, on market at the moment, and we're in that it's spring season. So anyway, it, it's just for me, yeah, you know, to, just to show that uh, I still don't feel that the confidence is there. Um, and um, yeah, just be careful, and and then just use one data point. But use you know a lot more data points in order to make your decision. Mm, well, I've always had the view that the auction clearance stats and the auction listing stats on the portals are about as useful as a wet paper bag um, <laughs> in terms of making decisions. They really don't tell you much at all. But the uh, the journos, if they got, I mean, they get paid an awful lot to just regurgitate those numbers every week and um, you know spook the market every week. But um, unfortunately, they're not seeing the truth laying below. Unfortunately, that's the way of the world, isn't it? Oh, look, it is. And, and they, they, yeah, everything's generalised. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, we, we look at different markets for different clients with, you know, in specific data in specific areas. Uh, and it all comes back to the type of properties as well, what, they, what they're looking for and, and, and their appetite. Do they want something that they want to, yeah, that they can renovate, they want to renovate, do they want something that they can just walk in? Yeah, all these things have obviously um, have a say in, in, in what we look for and what we, uh, in how we assist our, our, our clients and, and what they're prepared to, you know, to do moving, um, moving forward. So, so should every other buyer that's out there looking at property. Uh, don't just rely on uh, on an emotional uh, auction auction clearance rate or the oh. or, or 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 an auction that you saw go way above what you thought the property was worth because uh, two people decided to go toe to toe because the uh, you know the wives uh, you know had the cojones in the in you know in, in the bag and, and the husbands had to battle it out. <laughs> Yeah, the mind boggles. Now, talk about mind boggling. Um, there was this article which uh, was pretty amazing, right? National reform into auction laws should be top priority, MD says. And that says the Victorian government's move to fix underquoting is misguided. Instead, the national reform into auction laws should take centre stage to fix problems plaguing the industry, according to um, the managing director, according to a managing director and auctioneer. So, Edwin, what's the chance? What's the chances of getting any reform whatsoever in in this sector of the market? Well, man, come on, this is the what's wackier than the conspiracy theory. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, this is it. This is one of those wacky, wacky things. You know, it, it, it's never going to happen. It, it's never going to happen because you got the REIs, uh, which again the media uh, consider the REIs, the real estate institutes, as being the the, the bees knees of the of the property industry. Yes, they've got good, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, good uh, agency uh, forms, um, yeah, and, and so forth, and, and agreements to be put in place. Uh, between uh, vendors and, and agents, or or uh, landlords and agents, and so forth, you've got yeah. That, that, but that's about it. Everything else is that they will they will they will fight tooth and nail, and even 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 here. So you've got an, a, a, a real estate agent uh, that has a leading auction house in Victoria, uh, and you know, probably not a member of the REIV. And the REIV, you know, uh, what's their response to all this? You just say, you know, not in my backyard. Uh, this is this has been the attitude. It's not going to happen. The national reform for this is not going to happen. You, we're not going to get. We're not going to get that. What we need to see happen, if anything, is we we we, we need to see more policing uh, happening uh, uh, across the board, and there have to be more spot policing uh, on the day, uh, or, or you know, auction day, in the campaign. It doesn't take rocket science to figure out, uh, you know, who's underquoting and who's you know, and who's. Um, uh, you know, manipulating the the, the market and, and, and in a way trying to manipulate the, the emotion or, or on the day as well. So it, it really doesn't take a lot uh, to 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 
to figure out, given the fact that everything's on the portals anyway. And, and so once you start doing that and you start putting in place some serious deterrence, in other words, some serious fines and ripping up people's, ripping up agents' licences, then uh, there, there will be change. Until then, there's no, we're not going to see anything change. No, okay. And then we've got this wonderful picture here, right, from 2017. Now, this is what this is. This Santa Claus? What is, what's the story? I don't know. I, I was actually looking for, I was actually looking for, um, I can't remember whether it was 2012 or 2013. Uh, it was, um, it was, or might have been even earlier, where there was, uh, there was an auctioneer uh, in, in, I think it was in, in Melbourne where, where the, the auctioneer was a lady auctioneer and she was holding auctions. Uh, actually, it was, it was closer to 2004, uh, to the, between 2004 and 2007. And she was holding auctions in, in, uh, in lingerie. Uh, get up. And I was looking for that video to see if it, somebody's uh, you know, uh, put a, got it online. And I, but look, this is the next best thing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the wacky world of, of real estate and, and, and auctions. And that's all it is. It's theatre. Yep. Right? When, when people understand that an auction process is theatre and you can understand and you can get a grasp of, of, of the rules, they are pre, uh, yeah, uh, pre the day. And, and yeah, there's, there's things that you can do pre the auction day, uh, at the auction day, post the auction day yourself as a... Uh, as, you know, if you're going to participate in trying to trying to buy the property, well, once you understand those rules and you can understand how this fit, how 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 it works, then you've got a better chance. And and this was just for just to prove that it's this whole thing is theatre. This uh, this the uh, the so-called uh, national reform is theatre. Yep. It, it's not going. It, it's not going to. It's not going to happen. Um, and, and so that that was the whole point of that video martin that uh, snapshot of that video because but i really wanted to get to the other one because that was a classic i don't know i hope maybe somebody that's watching uh the, the show uh would, would have a copy of it. i can't remember whether it's with the current affairs or something but it was out there it's out there it's got to be out there <laughs> it's out there somewhere well if you know where it is let edwin know but uh, we'll see now uh, talking about um wacky things um of course the old granny plat the old granny flat uh, plan is um also a bit hidden the rocks potentially as well well, see, this is the thing. So you've got this issue in Queensland, right? And again, this is this is what, yeah, this is the what's wackier than a conspiracy theory. So you've got uh, Queenslanders and the Queensland government, or 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 or, or our, um, our our cousins there in Queensland, uh, you know, whinging and crying about uh, you know shortages of rentals, and, and you've had the the lady from uh, the, the Queensland you know, show, on your show about. Talking about the the shortage of uh, rentals there and the pressure they were facing, and here we have these clowns, these idiots, uh, go government officials again, you know, um, you know, uh, about to tax, uh, you know, have greater land taxes on people that have got granny flats that are providing, um, you know, uh, a, a good um, um, home. Uh, for people, yeah, you know, for small again, for families that want to have a bit of a courtyard and don't want to live in in an apartment, so they're going to be slugged. So, what do you think is going to happen, much? What do you think is going to happen? These people are going to sell. Uh, the, these uh, are, 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 are going to sell, or if they're owned by investors, they're just going to sell and come back to to New South Wales. So, this is the whole this is the whole wackiness of of, of this whole um, the the issues because it seems to be. Uh, the, the rental crisis seems to be hitting hard in Queensland, but yet, you know, can the government do anything crazier uh, than, than what they're already doing to, 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 to make things even worse? No, the answer is they seem to be uh, deliberately uh, chopping everything off at the four corners to see what happens, it seems to me. Um, but we can, we, maybe, maybe in that the windmill farm, maybe people are going to be, they're going to rent out the, the, those uh, the, those um, windmills. All right. <laughs> so can... Well, yeah. I mean, as long as you don't mind round rooms, I suppose you know, lots of stairs. <laughs> maybe that's what. Maybe we should have a, a new design of windmills, right? So basically, you have um, a twenty-story apartment, right, with a windmill on the top. There you go. Solve yeah. both problems. Exactly. So energy, you solve the energy problem as well as the um, 
you know, housing affordability. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, we should talk about the uh, the, the old Tom Panas index, right? Because it's a it's, it's a moving feast, and um, uh, I see that you've um, attached the uh, various um, you know Tom Panas storylines from the last few weeks. So if you go if you go back to the um, 20th of August, right, this one here, um, which is we're very close to the bottom, right? And then you responded, well, yeah, mm, I don't think we're going to see <laughs> frizzle, a frenzied sp- season to the spring. And then Tom on the 3rd of September said, it's clear, bars are anxious about their coming, so three out of six. <laughs> and then he said, well, the RBA info has got this wrong and performed poorly, you know, eight out of 12 sold. That was um, the following week. And um, then we had <laughs> clearance rate five out of seven. I think the RBA conservative with interest rates leading up to Christmas. Um, don't tell the uh, markets that. And then the real estate boom is over. But so is fear of overpaying. So seven out of nine sold. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you make of that, Edwin? It's it's just the Tom Panos probably <laughs> 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 uh, I really, I, I was hoping that you can help me out. So it says the real estate boom is over, but so is the fear of overpaying. Mm. If you're looking to buy at the bottom of the market, your time is running out. What's he really saying? <laughs> or is that a poem? <laughs> is that is that a verse of a poem? Uh, you know, it's, is that is it cryptic? <laughs> well, I think it is certainly a bit cryptic. But uh, yeah, the, the point is, um, what's he saying? We we it's not going to drop any further. Well, I would say that given what we know about interest rates, and given the fact that all of those interest rates have yet to propagate through, and we're seeing lots of people discounting their property at the moment. Uh, the boom is far from um, um, returning. The falls will continue for quite some time yet. Uh, I would argue that probably we've got property price falls at least the next six to 12 months. We'll see. Okay. If, uh, his obviously sits on the side of the vendors, right, yep. of the selling agents. So if I was reading this and I'm a vendor, I'd be saying, well, well why would I want to put my property on the market? Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. so, so. Yeah, it, like, like I said, it, it's cryptic. I don't know. Like, it, 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 Tom's a good bloke, but I mean, his messages are, are, are very, very cryptic, are, are very much an emotion on uh, emotion on the day. Mm. Uh, is 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 what uh, what you gather from a, from a lot of this. And and again, it go, goes back to uh, you know, what we say: it's, it's all theatre. Yep. Uh, it's all theatre. It's 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 just uh, you know you. you you, you interpret it the way that you that, that you wanted to 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 your followers, it, but it was interesting talking about interpreting the way you wanted to your followers. In a lot of his uh, you know his tweets and that, it, it, it really doesn't. Considering he's got ten thousand followers, it really doesn't get, get a lot of engagement. Um, but look, each to their own. Uh, yeah. Once you understand that, once you understand that it is theatre, once you understand that it is adversarial. Then you can uh, you, you you you've you, you've got the beginnings of understanding uh, how to uh, maximize your um yeah you know, your 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 hard earned dollars into getting you the you know, the, the better property uh, for your for your family that you want to establish as a principal place of residence for you know uh, for however long you you want it, you're you're planning on staying there. Absolutely, and you know the question I've got for you, Edwin, is in the current environment. Do auctions make any sense at all? You know, if if there's a property that you uh, really are interested in, um, isn't it better to um, you know do a little bit of negotiation before the auction and um, see whether you can't get it off the market before they actually try to take it to auction? Look, if you can buy it before auction, uh, obviously, you know, assessing, uh, understanding the the vendors. Uh, that the vendors uh, need, or you know, getting that information, trying to get as much information as possible and put it all together. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a better outcome. But then, um, I, you know, get, you may even get a better outcome post auction as well. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. you, you you just got to try. Yeah, this is this is the thing. This is but but this- if you if but if you know what the property is worth and how much you're prepared to pay for it, right? It yeah. seems to me that you you, you may well. If you've done all your homework and you've, you've done all the due diligence, being able to engage before the auction potentially yes. um, may, may give you an advantage. But um, 
if you're not quite sure and you want to see how it goes, then let the auction run and then, you know, pick it up afterwards. There's perhaps. a strategy. There's a strategy for that for 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 each phase. Yeah. There's a strategy pre-auction. There's a strategy at the auction, and there's a strategy post-auction. And you just got to know, uh, got to play because it's a moving target. It, you, you know, uh, it, it's as I say, it's an arena. It's a moving target. You're not, you're not jumping into, you're not jumping into the ring, and you're just going to, you know, punch the hell out of the opposition. You, you know, they, they're going to hit back, and they're going to, and you got to, you know, it's, it's what I put on my tweets. Yeah, you know, be, yeah, you know, be, be Tyson. <laughs> yeah, you know, move, move around. Uh, from time to time, you got to take a couple of blows. But you got to give as much as you you, you get, and, and this is the same. It, it's a ga- it's a game with rules. But it's understanding the rules. Mm. It's a duel. You know, call it a game. Call it a duel. Call it. it it's it's adversarial. Yep. So that's why you can negotiate pre, uh, at or post. So you just got to have a strategy for for um, uh, you know uh, for for all three. And look, things could change uh, on the on the day. Things could change. Uh, you know, uh, on that for 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 us uh, as uh, selling agents, we get instructions on how far how far to how high to go uh, on the day. But as I've shared uh, with um, on Twitter and as I shared with, with yourself and on the podcast, you know, I've had um, I've had both sides, you know, the you know, both the, the partners. You know, on different occasions at different times, you know, different instances, you know, each want to change that that um, that price point, and and for what from our side of things, we just got to make sure clear that we get uh, the uh, if there's going to be a price change, um, uh, you know, uh, that we can bid to the to the yeah to the maximum amount that we can bid to. Uh, we need to get it from both sides, not just the one not not just the one party. Um, uh, from 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 the couple, not not just the uh, one individual. You know, our, we've had all sorts of things happen o- on the day. We've you know, the o- auction stall on the day. What do you do when when it stalls? Do you do you chase somebody that when you're um, you know particularly when you know that the property is not on the market? Uh, you know, because of the feedback that feedback that you've gathered. Uh, you know, as to where where the uh, where, where the vendor's head is at, and where the agents are uh, really pitching the property at, and, and on the day, it's sort. Of, what do you do? Do you do you do you just sit back? I mean, it, it, it really it, it's it, you basically you, you can analyze your your opponent. You can uh, you can try to uh, understand how uh, different agents uh, act, and how you know, some who's you get to find out who's willing to negotiate. Uh, who who will uh, submit the the offers to the vendors? Uh, who who's willing to accept? Um, you know, who's keen on um, on 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 selling prior? Because you've also got to have the willingness of the agent to want to sell prior. There's there's all these factors that come into play. So it's very it can be very complicated. But it's it, it, it's it, it, it's um it, it's 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 fun. Uh, it, you know, it is uh, it is interesting. Um, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, I wish I could tell a lot more. I wish I could teach people a lot. Yeah, it's. But it's experience. Yeah, you, know, you, you you can theorize it, mm-hmm. but it's until you're on the floor, that, uh, until you're in the ring, uh, you don't know how you're going to react. Like Mike Darcy even said, you know, uh, everybody has a game plan until they get punched in the face. Absolutely. Well, you know, dance like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I think that's the way to think about it. That's it. <laughs> All right, and a tip for the day, a tip for the week. Um, interesting one this week, uh, Edwin. Oh, look, with what's happening around, with what's happening globally, uh, uh, locally, uh, the, the pressures obviously from that that are coming onto the, the the families from all sides with rental with the rental squeezes, the the, the rate rises, uh, inflation, everything. I guess the the tip for 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 myself and for for our audience. Um, and that I've been sort of thinking uh, a, a lot more of the, uh, over the last week um, in, for myself is how can I travel lighter? Uh, yeah, what can I do to travel lighter? Um, you know, what, how can I hustle? I, I need to hustle a lot more in terms of uh, to to gain um, uh, independence, uh, you know, debt independence in you know, with certain 
uh, in certain areas. Mm. Is it a is it a vehicle lease? Is it a uh, do, do you need to get rid of some of your toys? Uh, yeah, your to- toys. I mean, yeah, your speed boats and your stuff that you haven't used for a very long time. Your recreational vehicles that you haven't used for a very long time. Because I think harder times are coming, Martin. Like you and I have said, um, harder times are coming, uh, and uh, things, uh, yeah, prices of uh, you know, to to keep a, uh, a, a a sustainable lifestyle. It, it's just um, just becoming harder and harder by the. Uh, by the month, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, even one would say by the week. Mm. So it's yeah, so travel light and, and, and hustle like you've never hustled uh, b- before to to get yourself out of those encumbrances that are that are that are that are, that are very, uh, on high interest in order to position yourself to 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 be in in a better light. Uh, with the bank, when you go and, 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 and uh, present your, your mortgage broker goes and presents your file or your your, your file uh, to the banking institution, because it's even going to be harder to borrow money as rates go uh, higher. Absolutely. Well, I think uh, for me, Ed, when the issue of debt now is very serious for many people, right? And we've we've lived through, um, well, frankly, a generation where interest rates got lower and lower and lower, and it seemed like debt was easily and accessible forever and it was not paying you weren't, didn't pay much for it that that world has passed we have to live now in an environment where debt costs and if you've got too much debt and the rates go on going up you're going to get messed over so getting rid of debt is i think the number one priority and that means if you say you know if you need to look at some of those toys look at some of the assets that you're not actually using just to shift them on because the all the all the experience that I've got is that this debt cycle is going to get higher and it's going to stay high for quite a long time. It will eventually come down, but I don't think it's going to come down soon enough to save many people unless they change their behaviour, which essentially means thinking very seriously about how much debt have you got, how much wriggle you've really got to service it. And don't just assume by grabbing another credit card or in another piece of debt over here, you can borrow your way out of this. You can't borrow your way out of this. The only thing to do is to pay down, get as debt free as you can. And uh, frankly, pay down that mortgage as well, as hard and as fast as you can. Yeah, for, for the people that want to get into the uh, property market, uh, it's very important. Uh, it, because institutions are going to look at that extra, the, uh, the, the those credit cards, as you say, uh, those um, you know uh, lo- lines of credit elsewhere, those leases elsewhere, and, and they're going to uh, assess those because they 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 they, they have some hefty uh, hefty fees attached to them, and and, and that's going to either they're going to accept or negate your application. It's as simple as that. Yep. Absolutely. It makes very important uh, reading, I think. Edwin, as always, a very valuable conversation. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll do it all again next week, by which time things will have morphed even more so, right? It's not like there's nothing to talk about every week, is there? <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's – we'll, we'll know. We'll know what uh, – what, we'll definitely know what happened to Z. That's one thing for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I should look forward to that. Edwin, see you next week. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.